In the great state of Montana, game wardens fight a daily battle. They fight to enforce state game laws and protect our natural resources. Today, Region 4 wardens saddle up for a backcountry patrol cracking down on the illegal activity. That's potentially one illegal outfitter in here. With the Kokanee spawn in full swing, Region 2 wardens look for illegal anglers. Run into that last hungry grizzly bear. <laughs> and for one hunter, his day in the field lands him a ride to jail. And it all happens right now. Wardens John Lasowski and Bob Hammer team up with a local outfitter. They're headed into Montana's backcountry to check an area known for poaching. Typically when we go up here, we've had problems in the past. And um, so the idea is we're gonna go in here and just kind of do a compliance check. It's nice that they come in and with us and go up here and check it out once in a while. At least the people know they're in the area. Illegal uh, outfitting, uh, taking non-resident hunters, uh, filling, filling other people's tags, uh, stuff like that, you know. We had one gentleman up here, oh, I guess it was three, four years ago that we ended up arresting a bunch of folks and bringing them back out. Um, that gentleman since then has had several altercations with law enforcement. On this remote patrol, wardens, uh, they don't take chances. This is for protection, actually. I've been up here before and it just, uh, it's just nice to have a long gun. The wardens had received a tip that they could discover a few hunters who do not want to see the law. The big thing with this, knowing that we've got maybe somebody up here that uh, is potentially volatile, if you will, um, we're bringing, bringing an extra warden this time. Hammer I work pretty hard with here in, uh, in between our districts, and uh, so he's gonna come along with us. Um, hopefully keep it safe by having extra help here. It's a long, slow ride back into the hills. Wardens spot their first hunter. What do you know? Well, I thought there'd be two feet of snow up here. I was glad to see there wasn't. <laughs> John, remember? How are you? Good. Yeah, what was your name? James, James. nice to meet you. Yeah. Harvey. Nice to meet you. A relative? Uh, actually, a friend of mine out of Alaska. <sighs> nice to meet you, sir. The warden recognizes one of the hunters as a habitual lawbreaker, and he's wrestled with him before. After a bit of questioning, Lasovsky realizes the man has an out-of-state hunter along, and he's only carrying a bird hunting license. Yet, they're camped out in the heart of elk country. Well, he was packing a shotgun, but I'll bet it's got slugs in it. Right back up to bringing somebody up here from Alaska with a bird license. The wardens choose to leave the hunters, but they'll keep an eye on them. Up the trail, they discover the camp. Are you sleeping? Oh, you, Sorry about that. Look, you don't have to come all the way out. I can come in if you don't mind. I'll just no, check. I'm all right. I'm all right. Okay. We're just checking a few tags. How are you? Good. John Lasofsky, State Game Warden. Nice to meet you, sir. Yeah, you. where are you out of? Uh, what you in? I'm out of, yeah, that last one. Oh, perfect, one. perfect, well, good. The wardens encounter another hunter and start to ask questions. You guys haven't had any luck? No. No? That's Bob Hammer? Bob. Bob's out of Stanford. He's over the other side of the Little Belt. Oh, Mike, Mike, Mike. Mike Parsons, oh. yeah. He's uh, down in the bottom here. He's got a camp all the way to the bottom. We're just up checking camps and doing our thing. Yeah. How many days you been up? We came in on uh, Thursday. Okay. So you're going to be here probably a while until you get something down. I hope to. Yeah. Well, you're in good company. The guy that's there knows what he's doing. So, um, with this Mr. Right. He knows the area well, yeah, so you guys ought to do well. So, well, good, good. Well, do you have your licenses handy on you? I do.
What end is Yucatan at? Is that the south north east. end, southeast? Okay. Give you these back. And we'll move on to our next camp. We're just right. checking camps up here, see how everybody's doing and hope this to see. This pile over here mm -hmm. was in here when we got here. We got in here late Thursday night. Right, that stash right there, you mean? And we discovered it, it's not ours. Okay, tent, sleeping bags, stove. Chairs, looks like it's, somebody's getting ready to come in. Well, this can be a wreck up here, you know, and it, when they get a lot of elk, there can be a lot of shooting. And yeah. That's partly why we come in after opening days, just to kind of see what's been taken and what hasn't. It was about two, three years ago we came up here, we had like five or six shot and left in the field that were all cows and they were left. So we decided that we needed to get here a little sooner and maybe a little more often. Yeah. So anyway, all right, well, good luck to you. Right, yep, yep, we'll see you. Although this camp checks out, wardens still have their suspicions. All that crap in there, I think it's up to something. Got right. to got two yeah. Of yeah, full blown camp. Um, checked it out, we've got two non-residents, one with just a bird license up here. That's sitting at about 7,000 feet with a bird license. And uh, so it was a good check, a really good check. Coming up. We hired an outfitter out of, uh, well, I don't know if he's really an outfitter, but he's out of Bozeman, Montana. Warden stumble on a second suspicious backcountry camp. That's potentially one illegal outfitter in here. Sealy Lake, Montana. In Region 2, State Game Warden Bill Copen hits his morning patrol. We're just going to go check some kokanee salmon snagging holes, illegal and legal, and we'll see if uh, people are after it today. They've started a little bit early this year, and the salmon are pretty good size this year, and people like to snag them, and we're going to head to the canoe access area here. We don't hit this UPS truck. It's a little slick out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know the guy. I pulled him out of the ditch once, so he owes me. <laughs> the warden hops out to check a known snagging spot. Come on, Jess. You can come out. Copen is a longtime warden, and he uses a few special tools on patrol. He's in bear country, so he's got the dog along with him, and he carries an unusual piece of gear. Hopefully we don't run into that last hungry grizzly bear. <laughs> in old three wood, just in case. Come on, Jazz. Got a girl. <laughs> Good one. Nice. He's a bird dog. In the first hole, no sign of fish and no sign of snaggers. Yeah, I don't see any just yet. It's open till December 1, but it's, it's a pretty easy deal. Come on, Jazz. There you go. Easy, easy. The warden moves on to check a second spot. Somebody's down here. I don't know if they're hunting. I think, would think they might be hunting. All right, I'll bust a fishing game guy. The truck looks to be state owned. Copen decides to investigate. How you doing? What's going on? Are they up here? There's yeah. a bunch at the Dogtown Bridge. The warden discovers a state fisheries biologist. Um, yeah, I'm trying to locate all the different spots where we can dip net them and or snag them, I guess, whatever we need to do. We're just gonna get some extra length data off of them. Right on. They're, they're turning cool. red. And... Yeah, oh yeah, they're, I mean, they're, a lot of them are kind of on their way out now. Uh-huh, um, yeah. Down you can kind of the... see that, yeah. Dog? Dog? Okay. On the backs of them, you'll start, start to see some of the fungus. Right. You're on because they're starting to kind of yeah. just, this is the best it's been in a while. Really? At the Dogtown Bridge, yeah. Okay. Is that so, a male? Yep, yeah, yep. you can see the males are deeper got red and they've got the kite, so they've got more of a hook jaw. Oh yeah. But yeah. you know, these guys are all pretty small. The idea is that we're gonna try and see if we can get the overall length of these bigger, you know. And you'll spot. put all these back? Yeah, these will all be returned here, yep. Yeah, so I'm trying to just get a few from each of these spots to try and lock down, you know, consistent areas you to get this. them year after year because it's tough for us to get them in the lake. You're tough. It's cold. Place. It's 19 degrees. The waters are killer. 
Oh, he's up, uh, oh, up on your Alba. Hand. Up on Alba. Alba. <laughs> it's not bad now. Like I said, it's the water. It's the killer. Well, nice seeing you out here, Will. I thought you were... Oh, you thought, yeah, you thought you had some. I thought I had some. No, I saw the truck right away. <laughs> I knew it was the department. Cool. Well, yeah, if you got I'll, any more tips as far as uh, spots that I can dip that or... Well, I, mean, the, I know Dogtown's dog, Like I say, I mean, we're trying to get for each of the, each of the chain lakes. Uh -huh. We're trying to get length, extra length data, so... Okay, well, I'll check them out and I'll call you in. Yeah. So you get some time. Okay. 150 miles east, in the backcountry of the Crazy Mountains, state game wardens patrol a remote area known for elk poaching. Wardens John Lasovsky and Bob Hammer discover a hunter with a known poaching past. They question him and let him know that he's being watched. Soon enough, they run into more hunters. How are you? <laughs> You're back. They know this party too. Garrett, nice to meet you. I'm, I'm glad to see you, that's a pretty good deal. So, are you learning anything? Yeah. Are you? So you got a good teacher. Your dad's a good hunter. <laughs> the father-son team harvested two elk. Got your camp up here? Right over the hill. Okay, perfect. Who got that one, your boy? I got this one. You did? The boys are back at camp. Perfect, all right. So how big is yours compared to your dad's? Oh, just a little bigger. Just a little bigger? Oh, <laughs> Their tags and licenses check out. No, it looks good. All right. Well, good luck to you guys. It was good meeting you. All right, we'll see you up here again. See you later. Yeah. Still ahead. Almost looks like they got waders on. Wardens spot trouble. Way back in Montana's crazy mountains, the state game wardens patrol on horseback. They watch for hunters in a remote area known for poaching problems. How you doing? The team discovers a camp. Good. <laughs> hey, Bob Amber. Bob, nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah. How many did you guys end up with? Well, we got the one over here that you can look at. And you haven't run into those guys up there? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Is Justin with you? Yeah, Justin's Justin, a yep, yep, yeah. exactly. Right. I know Justin, he's a great guy. Yeah. Good to see his kid out here. Yeah, he, he got this one or whatever, so. This is, okay. <laughs> he was saying it's a little bit bigger than my dad's. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So you guys up for all week or? Well, yeah, supposedly. You know. Yeah, unless you guys tag out, right? Yeah, exactly. All right. The wardens do a quick walk around in camp. In Montana, elk hunters must follow special camping rules in the backcountry. Food storage, collecting garbage, even feed for their horses. The That's horses, good. they're doing okay with feed? Yeah, we Pretty got good. the pellets there. You know, oh, you did bring some pellets, okay. Out there and raise them a little bit. I don't, I don't deal with the horses too much. That's not my uh, cat's That's meow. Not, yeah. <laughs> We hired an outfitter out of, uh, well, I don't know if he's a really an outfitter, but he's out of Bozeman, Montana, that, that, that brought us in. Oh, did he? Yeah, and he's supposed to come out on, uh, on uh, Friday. As they talk to this hunter, they discover a story that just doesn't quite add up. Who's that? Uh, he's called Rocky Mountain. The wardens question the man about the supposed guide who helped gear him up. What's that cost you? Yeah, guy oh, you know, it was only two fifty. Two hundred fifty bucks. Oh, a person. A person. Oh yeah. And then he charged us some mileage. That's pretty good. And he packs your elk out in the whole deal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well. No doubt about it. So. Well, it was good to see Justin's kid in here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Come on, Well, thanks, boys. I guess. And yeah. Yeah. You know, type thing. And, take yeah. her easy. You guys. Uh, you take care. And you too. Good luck on the rest so of the week. You guys be up and around a little bit more, I'd imagine then. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna try to be. All right, see you guys later. See you guys later. While this camp checks out, wardens have questions about the hunters and the guy. That's potentially one illegal outfitter in here. Back in Region 2, Warden Bill Copen keeps an eye on a closed salmon snagging area. They're definitely uh, dressed for warm weather. The warden spots two people dressed in waders. The only thing is, this part of the Sealy Lake chain is off limits to fishing. Yeah, they see me. I'm gonna go in to see what they're up to.
How are you guys doing? Are you doing some snagging or? No, we're just walking. Just walking? Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't think you can snag anymore, Governor. Uh, you can't. Are you guys fishing? Looks like you. They're large balls. Huh? Oh, you look for the large balls? Yeah. Have you found some? Turns out these hunters search for a true Montana rarity. <laughs> it's my first time. I got really yeah. excited about it. Oh, yeah, they're pretty interesting, I think. Yeah, I, I see them in town for sale. Did you get some big they ones? Them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They sell them. Yeah, they're pretty. Oh, I didn't know that. Pretty popular. Yeah, that's a neat one. Yeah. Yeah, you don't see many people that go after them, but there are still <laughs> people doing it. They're called larch balls, and they occur naturally in this part of Montana. Oh. You can have all the larch balls no, you want. No, no. I, I, I just took her down to, just to show her the same. Curious hunters wander by and see the discovery. Larch is the only pine tree that turns gold and sheds its needles. And if the late autumn conditions are right, they fall into the lake and are woven under water with bits of moss and feathers and other forest debris. The wave action rolls them along the shoreline. Within days, they get bigger and bigger, but it all happens at the time that the lake freezes. So you gotta be in the right place at the right time or they're underwater. This hunter knows all about the Sealy Lake creation. He hunts them too. Is this one of the only lakes that they form on? Or? No, they're on any place where there's a large majority of uh, large trees, but you have to have the right shoreline conditions and a prevailing wind. Without that, you just have needles in the water. Yeah, yeah that's really cool. I've been doing this for about 38 years. Probably 800. <laughs> 800? <laughs> Still ahead on Wardens. Obviously, there's a problem. I mean, you know the problem as well as I do. Yeah. Wardens confront a hunter and try to shake out the truth in a questionable hunting camp. I happened to be close to camp, right. and I got nervous. White Sulphur Springs, Montana. Back in Montana's remote country, state game wardens John Lasovsky and Bob Hammer patrol in a problem elk hunting area. Kind of a cold ride in, isn't it? Are you guys just now coming in? Let me just grab brought this. some stuff in last week. All the way down to the one camp at the far end? Okay. There's a crew there. There's a crew there too? Yeah. Are you all tarped up? Your camp. Turns out these hunters hope to set up their elk camp on the same site wardens left earlier. How many guys are in that camp down there? Three, but it's it's a fairly sizable stock camp. They probably got six, seven mules. You got your licenses handy, by chance? Hey, Jesse, thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're gonna do about it. I don't either, we'll figure it out, I guess. You know, you can, you can camp right alongside, just up, up a little bit. Yeah, I should have set that tent up, because you can leave a tent up for two weeks. Right, right, okay. But Dang. Well, yeah, sorry about that. Just is what it is. Um, but there's plenty of room there. That's yours. This is Mason's. Yeah. Okay. Good luck First to you. First time in my life I've been checked. Fishing or hunting. Is that right? <laughs> First time you've been checked? Have you hunted up here quite a bit? I've never hunted up here before. Okay. What made you come this way? Well, he said that there'd be no one up here. Well, there hasn't been anybody up here until the last couple of years. I'm, hey. yeah. It's been miserable. Yeah. The problem is they need to shut this four-wheeler thing down. Right. Um, I hear you. We came up here to to check it out earlier in the season. I couldn't believe there is roads everywhere up here. Yep. And I think it's open till the, the 15th of yeah. September. September. Yeah. yeah. Well, they need to lock that gate before hunting yeah. season starts. Right. There's no way that crew got that gear out of there. We came out on the 15th or the they 14th. Had a, we, yeah, we were came up here the 15th to drop our hay off. Right. Feed. Yeah, these and guys came in Thursday. They had a pot belly stove up here that was this big. And this was during archery. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was, I, I, from what I understand from the outfitter down below, there was a camp in Michigan there. Yeah. The Michigan camp? Right. Okay. So, we'll check it. You'll, I, I need to shut that. You'll open. see me again. I mean, I know we got a problem up here. It's a big problem, man. Yeah. So, okay. Good luck to you. See you later. Good to see you out here. 
Boy, that's a big horse. Big, nice horse. That's pretty neat. The wardens break for lunch and try to figure out if they've got a problem on their hands. Earlier, they checked out several different hunters from the same camp. This hunter says the party harvested three elk, but this man says they only harvested two. The wardens decide to circle back and try to get the truth. I'm thinking you're probably gonna get your snow. <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> That's what we're worried about. Right. Because I don't, it's not good to, it's gonna take us two days to get out of here. Right. Or a day. Right. How many, well, we how many, elk, how many elk you guys got total? You got the, just so, the two or the three to get out? Somebody, well, no, we got, we have the guy that has to come in and get us out. We have oh. to call him. But how does he do that? Does he come in with just a string of horses and he has yeah. to break everything down or do you guys got to break everything we'll down? everything broke down. How did you find out about that deal? Uh, all these Montanans, and, you know, there's so many, so many people flocking to North Dakota because of the sure what's they, going on over there. Yeah, the oil boom. Yeah, and and this was a framer. I worked for a trust company, and, and uh, he's a framer out there, and, and uh, suggested this guy. He says he's real good. Or he has horses. He's a horse trainer. Horse actually. trainer is what he really does. So it's not like it's a, a guy that does it for a living. No, it's no, not an outfitter. No, it's not like an outfitter or nothing like that. So does yeah. he have to be permitted then? Is he doing? Are we doing something illegal there? He would have to be permitted. He would have to be permitted. Yeah, I mean, because honestly, I have I have legitimate outfitters up here. Okay. Warden Lasomsky discovers the man who hauled in these hunters is operating illegally without an outfitter license. That's the first problem solved. This is how I kind of come back and ask a couple questions about it. Well, I just, after we got done chatting, I thought I'd talk to you down below. And first I thought we talked about two elk and then possibly a third. When I chatted with you down Lodgepole. The hunters appear a bit nervous as the wardens question them about the number of elk they've harvested. Their story just doesn't add up. So do you have your license on you? Yeah, That's one yeah. thing I didn't do was check yeah. you. He, he said the same thing. He said uh, yeah. something about... Uh, Did I check you? License? Can I check you? <laughs> check license. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. This hunter hands the warden a validated elk tag. It should be attached to the harvested animal. And what did you, is this just, is just your conservation? Do you have, did you get an elk or yeah. where's the rest of it? And then where's your elk? A little bit of snow. In the corner here. Around the corner? Why don't you show me your elk? It appears these hunters aren't telling the wardens the truth. Now they have a problem. Today, Region 4 Wardens John Lasovsky and Bob Hammer saddled up and took a ride into the backcountry of the Crazy Mountains, looking for any illegal activity. That's potentially one illegal outfitter in here. In Region 2, Warden Bill Copen has come across an unusual find. And I have them in different shapes. Mm -hmm. And now in Montana's Region 4, State Game Warden Brian Goley's out on patrol after sunset. He's on a stakeout after getting a report of an illegal buck deer being killed. Oh, that's kind of weird. He spots a truck running without anyone around. Well, they had to start this remote truck from somewhere, right? See, I don't think they know where their truck is, so they started to see the lights, you know what I mean? Suddenly, Goalie spots a hunter. Hi. How are you doing? Just a local game, Warden. Did you get something? Yeah, we got my husband and two other guys out there dragging him back. Good. What'd you get? A big muley buck. Okay. Do you guys know where you're at? Uh, state land. Okay. Somewhere. Somewhere. It appears these hunters may not know their boundaries. The state land ends at the top of that hill, that little hill there, and that little hill. So if you guys were way back there, you're on the Dearborn. Did you have permission from anybody? No, like I said, I don't know for sure how far. So tonight, we got called at 5-11 that there were some people here that shot a deer. Uh, this is a little strip of state land here off the highway, and somebody shot a deer. Uh, there was a hunter sitting here waiting, apparently, for a deer to come on the state land, and these guys came hunting and went over and went way back off the state land, shot a deer. Anyway, you can look out here on the flat and you can see guys walking with headlamps and they're walking this way. So 
Something's up. Turns out Warden Goley already knows this hunting crew. That doesn't exactly equal good news. And the other part of this is the one guy has been charged before with illegally killing a mule deer buck, and the other guy with him, if it's the guy I think it is, uh, may have an arrest warrant for um, habitual poaching acts. The warden confronts the hunters. What's up? Not much. What's going on? I'm trying to drag a. Deer. Trying to get it out of here, huh? How's it going? It's not. It's a work. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, got them all tagged and stuff? Yeah. All right, where did you get them at? Just right up here. Well on this side of that fence. Okay, and what fence line is that? There's a fence line that goes across there. Yeah. Up, um, I like wouldn't say nearly on the top, but. Right, okay. And what's that fence line got to do with anything? Well, I thought that's the end of the state line, isn't it? No. Oh. The end of the state land is about right there where my flashlight is. So you're probably about a mile off. Well, see, the deal is at the back behind there, that, that whole thing is all block management. You understand that? Oh, see, I didn't know that part there. It's all public hunting, but you got to have permission. So there's people that have permission to be in there. Yeah. And then you guys go in there. So the guy sitting right here watch you guys go and shoot that buck that he was waiting to go kill, and that's not fair to him. No. The warden recognizes the men. When's the last time you've been in trouble? Never. You never got in trouble for shooting a deer up in Chester? Uh-uh. That wasn't you? Uh-uh. No, that was, no, I've never. Oh, I thought you worked up there once. I did, but that was, um, that was that other guy that was the year before. OK. These hunters suddenly find themselves in hot water. So this guy here is, what's his name? It's Tim. OK, and this guy down here. <laughs> what's his last name? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Get up here. As Goalie suspects, Police have been looking for at least one of these men. Sealy Lake, Montana. In Region 2, Warden Bill Copen tackles an all too common call. This feeding's got to stop. People just think they need to keep feeding these animals well. They're just hurting them. And these deer will bring in the lions and it'll just be a mess. He heads to a report of a landowner feeding deer. It's a visit Copen's made before. Morning. How you doing? You're feeding again. Yeah, yeah well, it's like this, officer. I, I, I guess I get a soft spot in my heart for, for the animals, you know. I do too. I, 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 I don't know. feed them to, to hurt them. I know. I, I feed them to, to keep them from starving to death. Out behind the man's trailer, food piles and plenty of now tame animals. In the winter, they, 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 half the game <laughs> dies. Well, then but, you, you guys be out of a job. We, we got to keep them alive. Look at these animals. I mean, you're making them tame. That doesn't do them any good for getting away from a coyote, a wolf, a dog. Uh, you know how many dog chasing deer uh, calls I get in a year? And this is part of the reason I get them, because they're so domesticated after you feed them. We talked about it. It doesn't help their stomachs. They know, they know what to eat out here. What's your first name again? John. 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 This is the third time I've been here, John. I'm not gonna kid you here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a citation for feeding. I'm not gonna give you the big one. You know what it is for what it could be right now? $535 ticket. You can't do this anymore. You gotta be done. Because if, John, if I come back. You're on the pocketbook to tell you the truth. I'm, I'm sitting in there just before you come. I'm figuring how in the world can I put up with this? I'm paying $5.60 for six loaves of bread over at the reserve sweetheart store. I said, how can I put up with this with all these animals coming around? So you're, you're doing me a favor if I just got the stamina, I guess, to stop doing it. The landowner worries the deer will die without his feed. Warden Copen takes a moment to try and educate. No, 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 John. They're doing just fine without your bread. Yeah, you're actually hurting them with that bread. That, they get some kind of a tar in their stomach from getting 
food that isn't compatible with their digestive systems. I don't know all the stuff, but if you research that, Google it, or ask one of our biologists. They eat in the, in the winter time. I mean, they, they can't. There's tons of grass still growing under these trees, and there's tons of, uh, you see all that brown stuff out there? They can eat all that. They can eat the evergreen needles when it gets yeah, they, real bad. They, they get the black it's not moss. great nutrition, but it fills up how, their how stomachs. About the black moss? They is, love is it. The goat's beard, they love it. Oh, yeah, it's they like love ice cream it. Cream, it looks like. Yeah, you got a nice family here, but you're, it's time to let them go. Okay? Bye bye, Bucky's. Bye bye. <laughs> They're not all Bucky's. <laughs> Some yeah, of them are doughies. Yeah, I know. Come and sit in my truck and stay warm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you a break on this, John. Here's some heat for you. What do you think? Are you going to quit? Yeah, I'll do my best. Okay, here's the deal. I made this for an $85 ticket for you, John. It's supposed to be $135. Put it down as a commission rule and rig for you. I know you're hurting for money. <laughs> Easy now. Okay, so you're going to take care of that. And it wasn't too bad. We worked that out. Yeah, yeah, thanks for taking, you betcha. taking it easy on me. Not a problem. And you take it easy on me by not feeding these animals. It doesn't do them a bit of good. I did this for you, John. Here's an envelope with a stamp on it. And there it's all addressed, and you know the rest. Okay, thanks a lot. I'm just <laughs> Come on, let's get you. Let's get you into the house. Even after writing a ticket, Copen suspects it won't be long before he's back. All right, glad that's done. Still ahead on Ward. When we came in the camp the first time, it wasn't even validated. He didn't. It was a slick tag. When he saw us leaving, he came and tagged us. Warden's trying to sniff out the truth from a suspect in elk camp. Up on Montana's crazy mountain range, state game wardens try and get the truth out of a group of suspicious elk hunters. And then where's your elk? A little bit of snow. In the corner. Around the corner? Mm -hmm. Why don't you show me your elk? Warden John Lasovsky suspects these men lied about how many animals they'd harvested. A hunter finally admits to a third kill out behind camp. Is that why you've got the horns hid? Because he wasn't. Well, that was not here yet. Yeah, he was not up here or whatever, you know, this type thing. OK. Is that why you're awful quiet? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. I just walked into camp and stuff and didn't know what was going on. And, right. Yeah. Although the men admitted to killing two elk, now they have a third. So, hey, what, what, what's, what's the gig on this? Obviously, there's a problem. I mean, you know what the problem is as well as I do, but yeah. give me the long and the short of what happened here. More or less is it, it wasn't taken. Right. You know, and, and right. you were over there talking to Jason. Right. And uh, I I happened to be close to camp, right. and I got nervous. This is that third elk we talked about. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep. I mean, we, that's what he talked about, yeah. and that's why your buddy. And, and, and you know, in reality, that's why your buddy's down there stammering and staggering when I asked him about the third elk. Right. Absolutely. You know, and, and it, you know, it, it, it should have been taken. There's no doubt about it. Right. And the validation was about as quick as we could today. That's what I see. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, yeah. So, so let me tell you how we kind of, we, we chimed in on this. When we talk with Jason down here, right. he, yep. he said we got two elk. Right. And then he said, well, maybe we got three. three. Yeah. And then we came here, we checked two elk. Yeah, yeah. Jason said the same thing, you know, and, and he says, you know, you said two, and I, and I, I, he said three, and I really said two. I said, you know, sure. they're going to catch that, and they'll probably sure. be back and yeah. figure it out or whatever. And but, I guess we just so here's take... the deal. Thanks for being honest. Okay. Well, okay. thank you. I, mean, I guess you're going to have to deal no, with Travis. I mean that. That's pretty important. Okay. Right? This tag wasn't on this elk. It was killed on yesterday. Um, that's the third elk we were getting all twisted with up here. Oh, yeah. Why don't you grab this gentleman and have a conversation? And Why didn't you tag it right away? I had it. I killed it down there. I come up there. I didn't have nothing to tie it on or any tape on it. Uh -huh. It's left in my pocket, and then I heard that you guys are around here. So now I was following a blood trail for these guys, see if this elk died or something like that down there. And I had it in my pocket, and I told them, guys, this is duck it, you know, for now until I get up here and duct tape her on there and do something with it. That's the only reason I didn't have it on there. I mean, you, you killed the elk actually yesterday? Yeah. No. Opening day? Morning, Saturday morning. Saturday, Saturday. about 1 o'clock. 
Well, let me let me chat with Bobby here sure. for a second. The warden step aside to try and talk through the hunter's confusion. The only reason you don't tag something like that is if you're trying to shoot something bigger, right? And he shot a spike. He's up there doing some big bowls out and out. We know what the gig is, so we just got to figure out how to get it out. The wardens have to deal sternly with the crew. So, who's got a check? Any of you guys got money in your pocket? I mean, honestly, not anything against you, but when you're up here and you shoot a spike bull and I got a slick tag for two days, what that tells me is that somebody's trying to shoot another bull. Whether you were or you weren't, that's what it looks like to me. Okay, that's, so that's what we're dealing with it. So um, when I find the spike, you, you know, you pull the spike bull out of the, the trees back here, that's a bad deal. So um, that's what we're gonna do with that, but I need that meat out. So you're going to take the meat down to your headquarters? Yeah, today? meat goes with us and it goes to the food bank. That's where it ends up going. But so um, we'll need, we're going to need bond. And um, otherwise, if we don't get bond, then you got to get on a horse with me and come down and it will call. I mean, it's an arrest. The wardens will confiscate the illegally harvested elk and tag the hunter with two citations. He'll now face fines of almost $700. If he can't pay now, wardens have no choice but to arrest the man. Going to be a possession and a failed attack. He was here, there's no doubt he was here. That spike was hitting the trees. He was here to smoke another bowl. Failed attack, 87.6411, subsection 1. The bond is 135. 87.6202, 535, 535. So, um, the bond is $670, okay, that's what the bond is on it. Um, the other thing I wanted to make clear to you guys, we're not charging you with hiring an, an unlicensed outfitter, okay, but you could be charged, each and every one of you, for hiring an unlicensed outfitter. Is he really considered an outfitter just because he brought us in here and, and, and it, just left? It, it's kind of considered bringing in a drop camp. Kind of like a drop That's camp, even though we bring, have all our own stuff. Bringing in whatever. a drop camp okay. is what it is. But we're not charging any of that. You guys have been really good and really decent. Um, what we have here is a fail to validate, a fail to tag. Okay, so we're, we're, we're going to do one of those. We're, we're doing the fail to tag. We're not doing the fail to validate. And then, of course, this last but not least, the, the possession. Okay, and that's what it is, it's just an unlawful possession. The wardens confiscate the poached elk and head for the trailhead. It's been a busy day in Montana's backcountry. Straight ahead, wardens take down a suspected poacher. State game wardens investigate a reported case of poaching. Warden Brian Goley recognizes one of the suspected hunters. He's been tagged a habitual poacher, and now the warden realizes the man faces outstanding arrest warrants. Hey, how's it going? Are you going to be all right? <laughs> I don't know yet. Well, take your time. You know, I still got an arrest warrant for you. Yeah, I know. What are you doing out here, knowing this is my turf? You knew I'd catch you. I was with Matt. I am just helping Matt. All just right. Watching Matt, helping Matt. You still got an arrest warrant. You haven't taken care of it. How come? Because I haven't been working. And if I get to get a job, I, I would. Well, I'll go run you. Wardens face such challenges on a daily basis. Goalie needs to arrest one of the hunters and still has to deal with the illegally harvested mule deer. All right, I gotta figure out what to do here. You guys go get your deer, okay? Okay. Um, I call and see what the guys say about the ranch. I wanna look at the deer and then we'll decide when you get it up here, okay? Okay. Take your time. Um, you going back over there? I'm just checking. I'm not running. Oh, no, I know you're not. You're not going to outrun me. I could run past. I know, I can see you're not. I'm worried about you. I'm, I'm thinking of an ambulance right now. You don't look too good. 
the warden double checks the warrant and calls the highway patrol to make the arrest. Uh-oh. Do you guys want me to turn my winch around and get it? Back outside, the suspects have a broken winch, so Goalie jumps in to help retrieve the poached deer. Take it down there a ways. Okay. My guy's down here with the $4,000 warrant. Okay. He's down there dragging a deer up, and I'm helping him. So, yeah, he knows he's got a warrant. He's known it for three years. Too many things going on. <laughs> oh, God. All right, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Come over here. Apparently, you have a warrant? Yeah. Yeah, were you aware of that? Yeah, I knew that. Okay, so we're going to be going to the Cascade County Detention Center, okay? okay. Any questions about that? No. As well as a trip to jail, the suspect gets a few words from the warden. Okay, I'm going to get a warning for criminal trespass, okay? Because he led you there. I don't believe you went there knowingly, okay? I, yeah. You I, trusted him, okay? I trusted Matt, yeah. All right. Is all right? Is there anything you want to tell me before you let you go? Everything correct? Everything's correct. Okay. Was it good like, now? Right. I wouldn't lie to you, Brian. I know. You never have. I appreciate that. I wouldn't lie to you. Have a seat for me. Watch your head, okay? Even with the arrest, the warden takes care of the suspect. Here, <laughs> get your pop for you, okay? <laughs> Please. Just, there you go, buddy. You want the lid off, or what do you yeah, want to do? I want to There you go, buddy. Right. You be careful, okay? Yep. Thanks, Brian. Um, you guys are familiar now with what's going on here? Right. All right. <laughs> okay, you're going to get a warning for hunting without landowner permission, even though you didn't shoot. You were on the property, on the block management area, without permission. But because you believe this guy, right? You believe Matt, so you're just gonna get a warning, okay, you guys? The shooter won't get a warning. Uh, I talked to the ranch headquarters. They want you prosecuted for trespass okay. because you shot a deer without landing or permission on their property. Their concern is, just like I told you, is that they have people signed in to hunt this area, no, and you went in and shot that buck, and they that was their buck to shoot. Okay. And I should know better. You should know that because right. I was a hunting access technician. That's right. Block you were, management was you my know thing. better than anybody. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. And you know how to read a map too, don't you? Yeah. Um, you're going to lose the deer and you're going to get a $135 ticket for hunting without land or permission. Okay. Okay. Do you understand that? Yep. Okay, my man, you have till the 20, the 15th day of November at 9 a.m. to take care of this charge. Do you understand that? Yep. Okay. Any questions, my man? No. Okay. I'm going to load your deer and take it. Okay, can you push him in and shut the gate, you think? There you go. It's a big deer. <laughs> big old body bugger. Okay, that does that. Control FG410. We're good. I'll be clear from this case on 287. Thanks for your help. With that, Warden Goalie wraps up his day.